Today I'm going to be reviewing Esun's PLA Plus. So Esun sent me a roll of their PLA Plus filament and here's what it looked like when it arrived in the mail. And it was shrink wrapped as most of them are with some desking in it. But the first thing that stood out to me was the information sheet that they included. I really like how they just, it's one simple sheet, but on the back it has a table showing all the filaments they offer, the print temps, the bed temp, all the strength properties, everything you could ever want right there. So right when you get it, you have it right on the sheet. Then on the inside of the sheet, they also show all the filaments they provide, all the characteristics. So if you want to say, oh, I might want to print a cell phone case. Well, they have elastic filament. Oh, I might want to print something metallic. It shows you everything they have and a brief description showing what it's suitable for and what it's good at. Maybe you want to print something rubbery. They have different filament for that. So this is just really nice to have and keep it with your roll. So when you print, you know, what was the bed temp? Oh yeah. It, it's right there. They also have some temperatures on the roll, just the, the extruder temperature. And one thing I did notice is on the sheet and on here, it says 205 to 225, the extruder. The pictures online, or not the pictures, the in the description online, they had 190 to 210. It's not a big deal. I usually print it 205 anyways for PLA. Um, so it would be more in the, this higher temperature. And I just noticed a difference on there. Um, but getting into the roll itself, I always like the clear spool. It's easy to see immediately how much you have left. You don't have to kind of guess. And if you have a big print job, you can easily see if you have enough. Again, it's got the print temp right on there. And this is their PLA Plus color is gray. And it's got kind of a matte finish. They say the PLA Plus, their difference is it's a little bit stronger. It's got smoother lines. It's tougher and it's more glossy. Um, this actually looks kind of like a matte finish to me. Maybe it'll print differently, um, but I don't see a really glossy finish. But all these companies nowadays, it seems like the new thing is to say, this is our next level in PLA. This isn't just ordinary PLA. This is the next step up for everyone, which is great because it, it takes the, the best qualities of different filaments. Like maybe it's a little bit like PET for strength and glossiness, and maybe it's got the ease of printing of PLA, and maybe it's got a little more bendable. I noticed it doesn't snap off like a typical PLA. You know, some PLA just snap right off. This doesn't, I've bent it back and forth several times. So there's some more uh, additives or something they put in it to try to make it more universal for everyone to print with. Maybe, I think it's geared toward one filament that you can use for everything. Instead of, oh, I want this to bend, I'll use ABS. Oh, I want this to be a little glossier, I'll use PETG or this or that. So it's really nice to have, you know, one filament that you know is gonna work for every application. And if you go on their website, you can see that mainly all they sell is filament. They have some 3D printers and scanners and pens, but mainly they just have filament. And they have a ton. If you, when you look at the sheet, they have you know 20 different kinds of filament. And in all those categories, they have three millimeters, 1.75. This is a 1.75 millimeter. They have all different colors. This roll here comes, uh, they sell for 2150, um, which when I, a lot of times you, you read online, people say, what's a good filament to get for a beginner? Or what's, what's a good filament that's all around, you know, a good price and it's good for everyone. And lots of times I always hear people saying, eSun is that filament because it's a good quality at a competitive price. So we'll take this upstairs. I'll show you the settings real quick, the settings I'm going to be used to print with. And then we'll print them off and come back down here and, and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so here I am up at the computer, and before I show you the four parts I'm going to print, I wanted to first show you eSun's website. And here's their homepage, and if you jump into filament, everything's very straightforward, very clear. They have PLA, ABS, and flexible filament. They have it sorted by price and color, and what I'm reviewing is their PLA Plus filament. You can see all the different colors that they have down here. They have 1.75 and 3 millimeters, and... The filament I'm going to be testing is their PLA Plus 1.75 and it's gray color. And again, very straightforward. They have all the printing information up here, the temperatures, the speed, and a little bit more information down here. So everything's very clear and very straightforward on their website. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this chest piece. And this chest piece is a good overall print in that it has a lot of different features. There's curved areas, there's overhangs, and there's detail at the top. So this is a great overall part that would cover lots of different areas. And if we can get this printing well, 
it's usually a good filament and your printer's dialed in. The next part is what I want to use to test strength, and this is a bottle opener. And there's and this is going to test strength in uh, the bending, whether it's going to bend or flex. And there's a little bit of detail, a little bit of curve, but overall the printing of it isn't as difficult as the strength of this. And along those same lines, this is a carabiner, and this I want to test tensile strength, but it also has to be able to bend and flex multiple times at that flex point. So this is a tricky little part that will test multiple things, mainly ductility of the filament but, and also bendability. And the last part I wanted to uh, print for the review is this Yoda head. And now this will be all about the detail. And I haven't mentioned it, but I'm going to be printing all of these at 0.3 millimeter for the layer height. Um, so I know this is going to be testing detail, uh, but we're going to be trying to push this filament. You know, we're not going to be printing a very small layer height. We're going to be pushing it to a high layer height and see what detail we can get out of it. So this is going to have a little bit of overhang uh, on the chin and the ears, and we're going to be trying to get a lot of detail in all these areas. So those are the four parts. And now as far as settings go, I'm going to put the all the settings that I use at the end of the video. I'm going I'm to record it and put it all at the end of the video explaining everything I use. But let's just go ahead and see how this filament prints and then we'll see the finished parts. Well, I just finished printing the four different test parts with Esun's new PLA, and here's what they look like. And overall, I'm really happy with how this filament printed. Um, it worked under a wide range of settings, and everything came out super clean and accurate. There was no stringiness, no blobs. I didn't have any issues. It's just a really nice package, all the way from there, clear spool of filament, and just how it prints, it's just easy to print with, and it's how all these other filaments should print. And one thing I did notice that made this a little different from other filament is the bed adhesion. Most of the times I print on a glass print bed and I'll use a glue stick to make sure it sticks. And when I was prying off the first couple pieces, I realized it was really on that print bed. And I'm now I know a lot of people print right on glass with a high temp and I usually print at 50 degrees Celsius for the print bed. Um, but I thought, how about I try it without a glue stick? And for these last three parts I printed directly on glass, which I don't normally do, and it held fine. I've printed before with other filament and it pops off halfway or it moves, and the bed adhesion with this is more than I've found than any other filament. So if, if you want to print right on glass with no uh, hairspray or no glue stick or things like that, so it's going to stick to that bare glass print bed, which is really nice. And starting with the chest piece, um, I didn't have any issues with the detail at the top. It printed nicely in the, the rounded edge. As far as the carabiner, like most PLA, this is very rigid. I'm not getting a lot of bend out of it, um, but it's not going to, I don't feel like it's going to break. And it printed super nicely all the different uh, the, the zigzag lines in here, and it, it just came out really nicely and popped right off the print bed. As far as the bottle opener, again, I printed at 0.3 millimeters for Z spacing, but these lines are so tight and smooth. There's no sanding needed on this. This is a finished part as far as I'm concerned. It looks very clean, very nice, very strong. I, I'm really happy with how this part came out. Again, 0.3 millimeters, you wouldn't want to do that for a, a detailed, intricate part like this, but I was able to print this in under, you know, right around an hour. And even at that, you can still see all the detail and all the crevices and the wrinkles. And I printed this uh, with support under the ears, but I don't think it needed it. I could have just slowed that print down a little bit, but I wanted to print it fast. And even with that, it came out really nicely, just had to trim up the edges. and. It came out looking really nice and clean and crisp and you can see all the detail. So again, I was pleasantly surprised at how easy this eSun filament was to print with. It stuck to the bed. I had no issues printing. It worked under all different settings. I, I printed most of these at around 205, 210 degrees Celsius, but I printed one part at 190 and that one turned out well uh, just as fine too. So um, 
I had zero issues and I see now why a lot of people recommend it for uh, printing. Again, it came on a clear roll, a full kilogram. So if you're prototyping a lot of parts, you're printing a lot of things, you're getting a full kilogram for a very reasonable price, which is I think why a lot of people like it. it you know, it's, a, it's just a great baseline filament to use. If you want to print a ton of things, you're prototyping parts or you need it to come out accurate like this. If, if, you, if you work at a, a, a shop or something like that and you want to print out a lot of filament that you need to test fit and print out another one, this printed out perfectly and you could give it to someone or show it to someone and it would look exactly like whatever 3D part you, print, you drew up on the computer. So um, I see why this is a very popular and highly recommended filament by a lot of people. So um, I'm sure there's some people out there that have printed with it before. And if you have, let me know uh, your experience with it. And if you haven't, um, I highly recommend going checking out Eson's website and getting a roll. Um, you're not gonna be disappointed with the results. It's very predictable, very easy to print with, and it's great for beginners. So. Uh, I hope you liked the review and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. So as far as settings go, there's going to be slightly different variations in uh, whether you're printing this chess piece or the Yoda head. Some, like I said, some have different uh, features that we want to stress. So the Yoda head, we want fine detail. We might print it a little slower. But for all of them, I'm going to be using a layer height of 0.3. Now that's pretty high. And that's higher than I normally do. And I usually do 0.30875 or whatever that magic number is. But just in general, 0.3 is going to be pushing it, printing these quickly and seeing where they can fail. And for a shell thickness, I do 1.2, which is uh, my filament's uh, nozzle size is 0.4. So this will be three layers for that shell thickness. And same for the top and bottom. For the fill, for a chest piece, I'll do 20%. Um, for the bottle opener and the carabiner, I'll do maybe 50 or 80, you know, something much higher. Um, print speed is, I usually set it at 40, but you'll see later on and in the advanced settings, um, there's different speeds for different parts of the print. Print temperature, PLA, 210 is what I usually set it at, and build temperature, 60, uh, build, uh, bed temperature, sorry, 65 degrees Celsius. And that's so that part really sticks to the glass. Support type, this doesn't need it, although there's overhangs. Um, this obviously doesn't need any uh, support. The Yoda head, I usually, I will print that with some support, um, but very small. I think I have it set at 60 degrees for the, for the overhang right there. And platform adhesion, um, I'll usually do a brim as well, just so that it really uh, get good adhesion to the bill plate. Uh, none of these change. I have been screwing around a little bit with the flow percentage to get it uh, to print that top layer just right. I've had um, you want to get it a, a good uh, coverage on the top and bottom, and if it's not right with the percentage, it'll be a little uh, stringy. So I have been screwing around with that lately. Now retraction uh, twenty and two. I'll probably make that forty and four. Um, there should be no issue with stringiness, so it doesn't have to be that high. You could probably do 20 and 2 or 3 and 30 or something like that. And now this is where I, I do 140% on that initial layer, and that's to get a good squish down in the build plate and really get a lot of filament out. And I've had no problems with 140%. It comes out nice and smooth. Um, and now this is where I can adjust individual uh, parts of the print for the speed. So for travel, I set it at 80. For the bottom layer, that first layer, I set it at 20 millimeters per second, not 40. Infill, I set it faster. Top, top and bottom, um, 30, so it's a little slower. Outer shell is at 40, and inner shell is at 50. And I can also tweak it on the printer. I can set that multiplier on the printer. So when it starts off, I can manually dial it down, or if it's printing a little slower, that it looks a little slower, everything's going fine, I can crank it up even more. So those are the basic and advanced advanced settings of the Cura. You don't have to know any more than that. Um, yeah, there's a, some other things you can do with the new Cura or Simplify 3D, but these are just some very uh, basic um, settings that you can do, and you can see that it's going to take about an hour to print.